today's activity, we're going to be building a trebuchet. If you're not familiar with that term, you probably are familiar with its cousin, the catapult. In the last several years, both video games and movies have renewed interest in medieval life, clothing, and of course, weapons. Trebuchets were used to fling large rocks that could break down walls of a castle, allowing the invaders to get inside. Compared to a catapult, the trebuchet uses a sling that allows it to generate more momentum and projectile force. As we construct the trebuchet, you'll also have the chance to learn about the scientific elements, principles, and laws that led warriors to win battles long ago. At this time, gather the following materials. Alexander the Great used a projectile-based device called a ballista to overthrow the island city of Tyre in 332 BC. Now we're ready to begin. Punch out the trebuchet body pieces from the basswood template. The two small base pieces fit at the bottom of the Y-shaped side piece and glue into place. When you have finished this step, the four pieces will form a flat square on the bottom. After the side pieces are dry, locate the 1 inch by 12 inch strip of basswood and place it in the pre-cut notches of the small base pieces. Turn it upside down and measure the basswood strip on each side to ensure it is centered. Each side of the strip should extend 4 and 3 fourths inches from the center square. When you're comfortable with the measurement, secure the strip to the side pieces with glue. When your basswood strip is dry, you're ready to move on with the activity. Next, locate the four 1 4 by 3 4 inch strips. Line up the strips so they fill in the gaps between the bottom of the basswood strip and the square base. Before you glue these strips in place, take two of them and cut a small notch across the top with a hobby knife. The notch should be cut across the narrow side of the strips, about 1 4 inch from the end. The notches should be about 1 16th inch deep and should create small holes when lined up against the long basswood strip. Finally, glue the strips to the basswood. We're back and ready to move on to building your trebuchet. Using needle nose pliers, straighten one of the paper clips. Cut a 2 and 5 8 inch piece off the clip and bend that piece into a triangular shape. You may want to mark the spots that need to be bent with a felt tip marker first. Once the clip is bent into the triangular shape, slide the ends through the holes at the front of the basswood strip so the triangle forms a hook. Two other medieval machines that are commonly associated with the trebuchet are the ballista and the catapult. We're now ready to begin building the lever arm. Find the long piece of wood with the curved end that was punched out of the basswood template. This is the lever arm, and it has two diagonal cuts at one end identical to the small plywood end caps that are punched out of a separate one and one half inch by two inch wooden piece. Glue the end caps to each side of the lever arms curved in so they make the diagonal cuts stronger. The curved tips of the end caps may extend a little past the lever arm, so make sure the diagonal cuts are lined up. Music 
After you have glued the end caps to each side of the lever arm, locate the 5 32nd by 1 half inch brass tube and insert it into the hole. After the tube is centered, glue it in place so it doesn't spin. At this point, you should have the brass tube glued into position. Next, at the remaining end of the lever arm, there is a notch in the wood. Take the remainder of the straight paper clip and cut another 1 and 1 4 inch off with the needle nose pliers. Bend the pieces with the pliers to match the shape hook on the design template, making sure both ends are smooth. You may need to use sandpaper if there are burrs on the ends of the clip. Follow the template example closely to make sure the paper clip is bent in the correct spot. It's time to move on with the activity. At this time, line up the paper clip piece against the square end of the lever arm. This piece should lay across the top of the pre-cut notch and it should overhang the end of the arm about one half inch, forming a hook. Glue the hook to the arm. After the glue is dry, you're ready for the next step. Locate the 36 inch piece of string and cut off 12 inches. Holding the hook in place, Wrap the string around it so the hook is bound to the lever arm. Put a layer of glue over the string so it does not come unwound. Be sure not to get any glue in the notch. For the next step, locate the 1 8 inch by 3 inch brass tube and slide it through the short brass tube glued to the lever arm. Using scissors, cut the clear plastic tubing into four 1 4 inch pieces. Slide a brass washer onto each end of the long brass tube and push one of the clear plastic tubing pieces onto each end. It's time to move ahead. At this time, put each end of the brass tube through the holes in the side pieces. Be sure the hook is on the same side as the trigger and the diagonal cuts are facing upward. Push the last two clear plastic tubing pieces onto the outside ends of the brass tube to connect it to the sides. Be sure the lever arm swings freely at this point. During his study of projectile motion, Galileo discovered that the path of any projectile will follow a predictable mathematical curve. The shape of this curve is called a parabola. We're now ready to build the trebuchet sling. To begin, locate the piece of nylon and the remaining 24 inches of string. Trim each corner of the nylon at an angle and use your hobby knife to punch a tiny hole into each end. If necessary, you can use a sharp pencil to enlarge the hole. After your nylon piece is cut, you're ready to move on. Cut the remaining string section in half and tie a piece to each end of the nylon strip through the new holes. This material will serve as the seat of your sling. You have created the seat of the sling and now it's time to attach it to the lever arm. Take the free end of one string and tie it into a secure loop. The free end of the second string should be carefully threaded through the hole created by the hook on the square end of the lever arm. Tie this end into a knot so it stays connected to the arm. Use a dab of glue to make sure the knot doesn't come untied. It's very important to make sure the strings are exactly the same length, approximately 8 inches, so that the sling isn't lopsided.
Now it's time to add weights to the lever arm. First, straighten the second large paper clip and bend it into a narrow upside down U shape with sharp corners. You can refer to the area on the design template labeled weight support to make sure it's the proper shape. You also want to be sure the loop of the U is narrow enough to fit through the center holes of the weights. We're ready to move ahead. After the weights have been placed into the weight support, slide the clip onto one of the diagonal cuts in the lever arm. The weight will provide resistance in order for you to pull downward on the square end of the lever arm. Loop the free end of the string over the hook. With your finger, raise the trigger and put the hook under it. It's time to load your trebuchet. Gently lay the sling along the basswood base piece inside the trebuchet body. Roll a small amount of clay into a ball and tuck it inside the nylon material. It's a good idea to start with 100 grams of weight for every gram of clay. Before you fire, you'll want to ensure that everyone nearby is wearing safety goggles. The trebuchet can pitch ammunition several feet away, so be careful about what materials you use to launch. When you are ready, Pull down on the trigger to release the lever and fling the clay across the room. Items launched from a trebuchet are considered projectiles. Galileo was the first scientist who accurately demonstrated the path projectiles take while in motion. Now that you have your trebuchet constructed, there are several different experiments you can conduct. First, you can choose different amounts of weight and record the impact that has on your projectile trajectory and distance. Another variation is to change the length of string, size of the clay projectiles, and even the angles of the hook. You may want to build some protective walls or a target to aim for during your experiments. This concludes our demonstration of the Pitsco trebuchet. If you would like to investigate other activity kits, visit our website at www.pitsco.com.